Manual lymphatic drainage has been used for decades as one of the main treatments for lymphedema and other lymphatic dysfunctions. If you've been following along with me on this channel for a while, you know that's what I talk a lot about. But is the traditional way that we do lymphatic drainage the best and most effective way to move lymph fluid? My name is Kelly, I am an oncology and lymphedema specialist, and today in this video, I'm gonna share about the new and exciting findings on what may actually be the best way to do lymphatic drainage. This research is being done by the ALERT program in Australia, and it very well may change the way that we treat lymphedema with lymphatic drainage. I will also be doing videos in the coming weeks on lymphatic drainage routines that someone can follow along with based on this information. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. Before I begin, I wanna take a second and give a massive thank you to the ALERT program, not only for their dedication to this research and passion to improve lymphedema treatment, but also a thank you for providing me the slides and the graphics for this video to be able to share with you all. Please see the description box uh, below for links to the ALERT program content and their publications. The ALERT program has been doing research using ICG lymphography, which injects a green dye into the hand, or if it's on the legs, it's placed in the foot. And it's watched under an imaging to see what pathways the lymphatics moves through, or if it gets backed up, which can be called dermal backflow, then we know that that person may have lymphedema or a dysfunction of the lymphatics. From 2017 to 2022, this program worked with 499 patients with a cancer diagnosis. For the upper extremity or the arm, which would be considered secondary lymphedema, traditional lymphatic drainage would work fluid across to the opposite armpit or axilla and also down to the groin lymph nodes on the same side that someone had surgery or lymph nodes removed. We'd focus on moving all of the fluid in the arm away from this armpit or axilla on the side that lymph nodes were removed because we felt that this is the area that was not working properly or that was gonna cause congestion. So we move fluid away to make sure that fluid moves out of the arm and away from the area. But is that what they found to happen when they follow the lymph flow with the dye? Only partially. So let's look at the alert program's chart. See the ipsilateral axilla column? The ipsilateral axilla means the armpit on the side lymph nodes were removed. A very high percentage of individuals had fluid go to this area with the remaining lymph nodes. 98% of those with stage one lymphatic dysfunction or lymphedema showed the fluid move to this area. And even with stages three and four, which is more moderate or severe lymphedema, 62 to 75% still showed fluid moving to this armpit, which traditional MLD or lymphatic drainage encourages us to move away from. In the next column titled clavicular, that is the lymph nodes in the clavicle or the collarbone area, another moderate amount had fluid moving to this region as well. What really is something to pay attention most to is the last three columns. The contralateral axilla which means the axilla or the armpit on the opposite side, someone had surgery, had very little to no fluid movement in mild stages of lymphedema, and still a fairly smaller percentage even in higher stages. The same thing goes for the periscapular column. That means the back or the shoulder blade region. Lastly, I think the biggest surprise is the last column, the ipsilateral inguinal. That means the groin on the same side that someone had surgery. You know how in traditional MLD we teach to move, move the fluid down to the groin? Well, this study shows that no one in any stage had fluid moving that direction. Now, that is a big deal. So let's take another summary view. You can see here that summarized percentage of individuals that had fluid lymph fluid drained to each area or region of lymph nodes, with a majority having fluid moving still to the lymph nodes remaining on the side of surgery 
and up to the clavicle or the collarbone. And a minimal percentage actually had the fluid moving to the opposite armpit from surgery, as well as no one had fluid moving down to the groin on the same side, which what we traditionally taught. So what does this all mean? Well, it's still new research and it's, yes, it's incredibly exciting, but it's still very new and not yet fully ready to change everything that we do. The ALERT program is individualizing lymphatic routines for patients based on their own ICG imaging and the pathways. But we know that this can't be done for most people right now. Most people don't have access to this kind of care. So until then, my personal opinion is to consider this information in ways to be more efficient with your lymphatic drainage. If you don't have time to do a full 30 minutes or maybe you're a clinician or a therapist and you don't have time in your appointment slots, maybe you can spend 10 minutes and focus on these areas that we know a lot of fluid moves to and take away time from the other areas like the groin pathway that no one has fluid moving to in this study. Right now, it's still not wrong to do traditional or follow traditional MLD, but if this modification allows you to be more consistent including, in including this in your self-care program, then it's truly gonna be more helpful and effective. Now, what about the legs? We traditionally teach to move fluid to the armpit or axilla on the same side someone had lymph nodes removed. And if the lymphedema is only affecting or someone's at risk only on one side, then move to the opposite groin. So does the research show this is the case? Now let's look at alerts chart and findings on where the fluid moved to for most individuals with their ICG. For mild stages of lymphedema or lymphatic dysfunction, more than half of individuals had fluid, fluid going to the ipsilateral inguinal nodes, which means the lymph nodes on the same side that were taken with surgery with stage two, and then almost all had fluid going there with stage one. These two groups with more mild stages had a moderate amount of flow to the popliteal region as well, which is located right behind the knee in the back of the leg. For more moderate to severe stages of lymphatic dysfunction or lymphedema, there was still a moderate amount of fluid moving to those areas as well, but they also had fluid moving to the contralateral inguinal, meaning the opposite groin, as well as the gluteal or the bottom lymph nodes around the backside of the body, and also some to various regions in the thigh. So when considering traditional methods of lymphatic drainage, a small percentage had fluid pathways to the axilla or armpit like we teach or we taught in moderate to higher stages of lymphatic dysfunction. So again, here's a summarized view with percentages of pathways seen that the ALERT program created as a wonderful visual. Fluid can really move in various ways in the leg, but the majority stays near the groin lymph nodes on the same side, the opposite groin lymph nodes, and the lymph nodes behind the knee. Now, what does this mean for someone to consider for themselves and for a therapist to consider for their patients? In my personal opinion, full traditional lymphatic drainage should still be done with those who wouldn't have access to an individualized ICG scan like the ALERT program is doing in their amazing program. But again, if the limiting factor for including this self-care into a routine at home or perhaps someone is limited by insurance coverage or access to a certified lymphedema therapist or therapist, maybe you don't have the same amount of time with patients and you need to limit that time, then focusing on these areas that we see a higher percentage of individuals have fluid moving to or towards for a shorter time and modifying may allow for more consistency and just overall better care. Something is always better than nothing. So let's utilize these research findings and be more efficient in situations when we need some modifications and to better care for ourselves and our patients. Lastly, I want to also bring awareness to alerts, findings, and learnings from using ICG lymphography. We have shed light to the fact that surgery doesn't always block the lymphatic pathways, so a traditional MLD may not always be accurate in each individual situation. We can also use this imaging to map out someone's lymphatics for surgery, but also what the ALERT program is doing with creating an individualized map for patients to personalize optimal care for their lymphedema after cancer surgery. But lastly, 
MLD has often been taught as a very light skin stretch to move fluid. Many CLT programs have taught this in the past, but they have found that moving gentle and fast may be great for lymphatic vessels, especially healthy ones. But if someone has dermal backflow or a backed up lymphatic system where the fluid pools in the area, then doing lymphatic drainage or massage-like strokes that are firmer and slower may indeed be more effective. As a lymphedema therapist myself, all of this information does change the way that I perform lymphatic drainage and what I teach, but this is all still very new findings and more is needed before we can truly change everything we do and teach. I encourage everyone to check out Alert's full information, which I will link below to learn more in depth, but also continue to encourage and support research to look deeper into lymphedema treatment like this so we can maximize our ways to help this community. Again, in coming weeks, I will show lymphatic routines that could be a modification from traditional MLD. Following these findings, so be sure to subscribe and follow along to see when those come out. I want to finish by saying thank you again to the ALERT program for all the amazing work that you do and also for graciously providing this information and the slides for this video. Thanks everyone and we'll see you all in the next video.